The king of country music and of course godfather of radio in Ghana, the media landscape won't be the same without this man. The irreplaceable Tommy Anand Forsen is my very special guest right here on KOD Me. Please welcome the irreplaceable king of radio, the one, the only, my godfather, Tommy Anand Forsen. Thank you so much for having me. These days we greet like, you know, Asians. Yeah, yeah, we, we do this, you know. I, I'm, I'm only happy that, you know, uh, because of COVID-19, now we elbow. But I, th I thought but the... Um, I, I have a problem the with the whole would, elbow thing. Yeah, I, I thought the kick, kick. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would kick somebody. Let me do that right now. I would kick somebody so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, we're still sneezing in our elbows. So why would you agree with your elbow? <clears throat> I have a question, uh, you know, I have a challenge with that one. Well... They say we should do it, so at least uh, we do it. We're doing it. Yeah. How have you been? Very well. How are you keeping fit? You still look good after all these years. Well, I believe sincerely that God has got my back. Yeah, you definitely. Know, um, we all have problems yeah. on a daily basis, but right. I, I think that once there's a problem, mm. there's a solution. That's right. So I think we need to look for the solution mm -hmm. rather than just sit down and brood over the problem. I think what we all do is very often we, we sit back to brood over the problem, not focusing on the solution. solution and exactly. then again, we go through certain dips because um, I think they are meant to elevate us. Exactly. I mean, it's inevitable. Exactly. You know, you're going to have the problems <laughs> anyway. So, I mean, hey, why just sit down and brood over right. problems rather right. than right. focus on the solution mm. and, and be happy? Mm. Yeah. You started doing radio, you know, a year before I was born and I'm 42 years now. Um, when you look at the... I'll be 65 on Monday. Oh, come on. I think I need to... Let me, let me do this right now. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, my. Happy birthday, Uncle Tommy. Happy birthday to you. Ah, and of course, you. tomorrow is his birthday. So if you're watching right now, you can actually start sending your text messages to congratulate ah. him on another feat. We, we, we appreciate you. We thank God thank you. for your life and everything you've done. Thank you, you know, your contribution towards the media in, in this country. In 1977, the story started for you. Yeah. What was the motivation? Um, maybe let me just use the word accident okay just by accident right. you know not accident is as an accident <laughs> but um <clears throat> i actually fell ill you know and the story goes back a little okay uh but maybe later on we can get into that right. the, the story goes back a little when i i fell ill i went down with hepatitis wow um i was in bed for close to 12 weeks you know because obviously that affects the liver it and does. stuff like that even at that age yeah those days, there was only one radio station, which was GBC. That's right. And um, I wasn't really a radio person. You know, I was more into books and academia, so to speak. But one, one time, I just got so bored, and I, I chanced on radio. And there was this intriguing voice, Jim Amapofo. OK. I mean, the kind of music that he played, I hadn't heard. Well, I never listened to radio anyway, but it hit me straight away. And when he was signing off, he said, oh, he'll, he'll be back the following afternoon. Okay. So I did listen. <clears throat> he was back. Mm. And the selection was actually fantastic. Wow. And I said to myself, no, I think I need to just meet this guy, you know, just as a friend. Not having any intent of going into radio or okay. anything like that. But just to say, oh, I, I love what you do, how you speak on the air, mm -hmm. the kind of music you play. And so I dressed up and I knew that I was going to meet him. At the time, it was just closing. Right. So I went into GBC, filled the form, went in. I said, oh, I'd like to see Jim. They said, oh, he'll be off the air in about five minutes. And you know, uh, KOD, you being a media person, yeah. you realize that when you listen to somebody on air, you paint a different a picture, picture. A certain picture. <laughs> That's right. Person being tall, yeah. huge, yeah, you know. with the voice and everything. Exactly. And this guy comes out and there he is my size. Oh, dear. You know. And he says, look, who's looking for me? I said, I am. He said, okay, uh, what can I do for you? I said, well, nothing really. I, I just wanted to come and say, I just love your shows. Wow. Uh, I've listened to you just twice. And that was how my interest in radio started. But I actually trained as a mechanical engineer, you know, as the Ghana man say, Fita. Fita. Ah, right. You know, because I like tearing things apart and putting <laughs> them together. But the story goes on as in, we became friends, Okay. Uh, came over to my place a couple of times for lunch. And then, fast forward a bit, uh, Hinlon Restaurant, which is now uh, uh, Babylon Club, yeah. which is now Hinlon Restaurant in Laboni. Yes, Laboni. Uh, was about to open. 
and him and one Benny Uswenchi okay. uh, were selected to be the DJs. And so on the opening night, I was invited as a friend, you know, had a couple of drinks. And I was just watching people enjoying themselves, you know, dancing to songs. And, you know, each song that came up, people would shout, hey, yeah. you know, the popularity of the then music mm -hmm. today. And he asked me one evening when Benny was playing, I wouldn't I like to try my hands? I said, uh-uh, this ain't my <laughs> style. No way, right. you know. But I think there was a, there was a, a plan hatched to okay. get you behind the, ten, the turntables. Wow. And of course, those days it was vinyl. No vinyl, of yeah, course. Yeah, you know, um, stuff like that. Not power. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the plan that they wouldn't turn up on a Friday night, and I was waiting for them, you know, under the pretext of they were working at GBC. When they close at 11, they'll come over. And so the owner, realizing that I was a friend of theirs, said, look, why don't I just play some music and stuff like that? It was a total disaster. Right. I mean, I'm a total disaster. And I didn't know the difference between, well, people dancing and people walking off the floor because of the disaster <laughs> I, I, I committed on, in, you know. But by and, by and by, I started to gain interest. Then the radio bit came in. Okay. He had a program called Lunchtime Rhythms on Saturdays. Right. And uh, <clears throat> 1.30 to 2. He invited me just to interview me, you know, crack a couple of jokes here and there. And he had to travel. He didn't have anybody to stand in. And so asked me if I could do that. And I but said, well, was it allowed? It wasn't allowed. You know, and I said, Jim, uh, I, I'm not a staff. I'm not a member right. of staff, you know. But I think judging from the way I handled the turntables there, playing the music, you know, I'd improved tremendously. Okay. He thought that, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to get into broadcasting, though I had not planned it. And I said, well, it's not allowed, but he said, well... Let me, let me... Yeah. I mean, you had listened to the guy only twice and thought he was fantastic and wanted to see him. Exactly. Um, really, you're not much of a radio person. But did you I, always I have that passion for music? Oh, yes. I've always loved music. Okay. I mean, right from the beginning, okay. you know. Okay. Especially with ballads. Right. You know, uh, country wasn't popular at the time. Mm. But as it, as it became popular, you know, because of the way I introduced it, yeah. my heart went into it. But I've always been a music person. Right. You know. And he says, look, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll bear the responsibility. You just handle the program. And I was terrified because even though I was on his show as a guest, Turning the mic on for me Ooh. made me, you know, it's like that first time. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you've been. You've no, had, I've you been know, there. Ah, <laughs> you know. And I said to myself, uh, "Okay, I'll give it a shot." But those, of, of course, everything was scripted. You had right. to script of everything. Course you had to script. And I did mm. everything, scripted mm. it. And when I finished the program, people started calling GBC because they thought that GBC had hired a new voice because there was the George Krabs, right? James Amati, Charlie mm. Sam, Jim those people and so if you had to add a new voice there were certain programs you had to go through yeah certain training you had to go through before you even put on the air and so it became there's a whole lot of halabaloo in gbc right. he got into trouble but then may god praise his soul uh mr felix sejafa was okay. then the director of radio oh yeah who thought okay the voice he heard no mistakes everything speak and span you yeah. know to the point top notch yeah let's give him a try and of course, uh, KOD, those days, everything was like GC. If you didn't have GC, <laughs> not like today's, yeah. you know, they call it WASI and exactly. all that. And, you know, I, I didn't get the grades because uh, my old man died uh, when I was in Form 3. Wow. I had to work during the holidays to pay my fees because there was very little money. You mm. know, my mom was a foreigner. She couldn't work. Right. And so that was the way I was able to finish Form 5. I wasn't prepared to be a school dropout. Mm. So... I couldn't go to sixth form. I mean, for someone who loved reading, obviously, yeah. you had the, yeah. the drive to, to you pursue. Know, and I was always in the dictionary. Right. You know, especially realizing that, okay, my passion has shifted from being a fitter to going into broadcasting. So my first book at the time was the Bible. My second one was the dictionary. Yeah. And so um, he put up a good fight saying that, look, judging from the way he speaks, diction, everything was good. Let's give him a shot. This is a, a job of talent, you know, right. and if we're going to go by the standards of grades. Mm -hmm. I had good English. Uh, I failed successfully with mathematics. <laughs> After that one, I failed <laughs> successfully. You're not alone. I think we, we can count a few people. We can count Sifakai. We can count myself and Fifi Banks. I know three people. <laughs> you know, so um, basically that was how it, it began. But I had to do a program called Variety Ahoy, right. which was like um, a show at the GBC Clubhouse in audience, you know, mm. to get me to get used to the microphone, you know, get used to people.
and then from there shift to mm. the studio. And so basically that was how my radio journey began. Wow. Yeah. And when we come back, we want to find out why he, you know, relegated his passion, his initial love of history, and putting things together. And um, everything that he's become over the years. Tommy and I'm posting is our very special guest right here on KOD. Smiles are one of the most important things we have. Globally, one in two children suffer from cavities. Pepsodent with maximum cavity protection repairs tiny holes before they become cavities. Because every smile matters. one who's prominent in the media today who doesn't look up to someone like Tommy and Anforsen and we, we honor and celebrate you any day. We're still very thank happy you. to have you around Tommy. I give glory yeah, to Yeah, we thank God for your life. Yeah, you know? yeah. um, your, your, your birthday tomorrow. Typically, how do you celebrate your birthday though? Uh, usually very quiet. Um, mm. I do a lot of reflection. Okay. You know, uh, what have I been through over the year? Mm. Um, even though God gives us the strength to get up every morning and exactly. give him grace, you know, but um, to go through a whole year, you know, um, yeah. you, you need to really sit down and reflect. So yeah. what did I do for society this year? What am I going to do next year? You're just, uh, just going to be thinking, you know, yeah. the whole well, ups and downs. Everything, you know, and of you still a week. meet. Yeah. And you still meet another year yeah. of when you were born. Yeah. And so um, I take it slowly. Maybe in the evening I go for dinner, have a couple of drinks, right. you know, but... It's nothing as somebody say, giddy, 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 party giddy, giddy. or anything yeah, like that, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and what, what do you like to drink? Oh, I love my beer. I love wine. Occasionally, right. I would have a whiskey and soda, you know, but that has been off the shelf for quite a while. Okay. You know, so now I have a beer here and there, okay. you know. Okay. You know, when, you, when you're getting to a certain stage, you need to tap the brakes <laughs> gradually. Eh? Start slowing I, down. Eh, I have it, here. I have it. It's been more than 40 years of everything that you love to do on radio. When, when, when you sit back and listen to radio these days, what will run on your mind? What runs on your mind? Ah, that's a million dollar question. Yeah. You know, um, I think now, um, I always say it's a personal opinion. Yes. I could be wrong, but I think radio has taken a huge dip. Mm. As far as uh, professionalism is concerned, the ethics have been virtually shelved. Mm. Uh, mechanisms that have been put in place are very rarely adhered to. Right. Um, <clears throat> I don't think people are really willing to learn you know, as some of us did. Mm. I think they've got the opportunity to do the job. They've been handed over the microphone. So long as you're able to say, hello, good morning, welcome to the show, or your mama kwaba, you know, that kind of thing. It takes a different turn. And so the real nose uh, thing about, I know about radio, is not really there. Mm. And so, unfortunately, it's, it's very bitter to listen to radio these days. There are a couple of people I would listen to. I mean, when you were on Radio Gold, I would listen to you yeah. any day, any time. I listened to uh, um, uh, Kwame Sefakai today. When uh, KSM was on, on Vibe, I would listen to him. You see, uh, there, there's so much difference between the people we had maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago yeah. as of today. Mm. Today is just, I need a job. Okay, I want them. Uh, what, what do you think accounts for this? Is it because they just want to be famous? I mean, some of us I think so. carried bags, we actually served, and oh, yeah. like you did. Yeah, you I know, did. To, I did. To carried bags, school, you know, yeah. uh, going to buy planting exactly. and, and, and you know, serving for, those that you look exactly, up to. Exactly, exactly. You know, but like you rightly said, I think people just look out for the fame. Um, oh, I'm Cause, popular. Cause sincerely, <laughs> I mean, I, and I have to say this. I mean, the first time I went on radio, I was seven years. You know her. Emilia Cromwell Adama. Oh, yeah. Yes, that was oh, my mother. Yeah. That was my godmother. She had a show on GBC and um, invited me to come around, and that was it. I'm like, okay, I'd, I'd want to do this. Many years later, 
look at me. And I, I looked up to people like yourself, Chrissy J. Dakwa, Kweku Buafwajiman, Sifa Kai, who took me, you know, as his own boy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. has always been prominent in my life. Yeah. You know, and um, um, these days, no, they just... No, I, I think uh, they, they're just looking for the popularity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to use the platform to, grind, to try and get certain things that either to, if they had a normal job, mm -hmm. They probably would not mm. have those things, right. you know. Align themselves, unfortunately, to say with politicians. Exactly. Uh, align themselves to, with government and, and stuff like that. Um, I, I have never been in that direction. Mm. Uh, even though I have my political affiliation, I always okay. prepare, prefer mm. to, to remain neutral. Right. When the time comes to vote, I go and vote yeah. and, and, and that's yeah. it. But it's unfortunate that um, it has turned out this way. I think it really could have been much better if the standards were maintained, ethics were adhered to. Mm -hmm. All the mechanisms put in place and policies put in place by radio stations were heard to. Right. I think radio would be a much better thing. Well, one today. would argue and say, you know, <clears throat> the world is evolving. We're going through a different phase and maybe this is how things ought to be now. <laughs> I, I, would, I would beg to differ. So once on you that. can communicate well, you don't need a degree, you don't need to study broadcasting. If you understand the issues, get the microphone and communicate. Exactly. But you see, KOD, people forget to realize that radio is the most powerful medium on the face of this earth. Yeah much bigger than television yes. television is visuals it's more of entertainment and news and stuff like that but you see once you communicate into people's homes yeah. it's your duty people look up to you radio is to inform educate and entertain right and so if you misuse the microphone you can create a problem it's you know, created I, problems yes, in many countries huh? many, many countries <laughs> and i always use rwanda as an exactly. example exactly i always use that as an example so the issue of having to sit down before you go and sit behind the microphone, what to say, when to say, right. and how to say it. How do you cut across? Of course, everybody will, will misinterpret some things that you might say or do on the air, okay? But professionally, you know that you're supposed to communicate to people. Yeah. You're supposed to teach people. You're supposed to inform people. And nowadays, uh, unfortunately, mainstream radio won't go away, but social media has taken over and so you can that was, see that was actually going to be my next question yeah you can see the depth of if i should say thrash that mm. goes onto social media mm. anybody can just get up and put on right okay. so much but with radio you have to find the facts you just cannot go on radio and say anything that you want when you know that it's not true okay so people look up to you become a role model mm. to people right people learn from you people take what you say and guide their lives mm you know, shape themselves. And, and I've had that uh, 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 praise so many times that people say that I've, I've been able to transform their lives. Yeah, you you do that, yeah. you know. But today it's like, if you don't insult, you're not doing Ooh, the right thing. One. If you don't shout on radio, you're not doing the right thing, you see. And it's, it's deafening at times it when is. at a certain stage in your life, you realize that you want some calm, yeah. you know, to listen to. But on a hot afternoon, people are screaming and shouting. And I hate to say this, but... And it's, it's become the norm. It has. Like who has the loud, has. loudest voice? Exactly. <laughs> you know? And people might say that, yeah, times are changing. Yeah. Exactly, times are changing. But you see, Hildi, you know the rules in radio. I mean, if in doubt, delete. If I'm, if, if I'm sure, you know. But ask yourself, what am I going to say today that is going to benefit somebody who's mm. listening to you? Mm. Is it the screaming? Is it the shouting? Mm. You can communicate the same thing in a very much, yeah, much you know, subtle way. Subtle way. Yeah. And, and the message will go exactly. down. And I think that will bring a lot more respect than you screaming and shouting and insulting. It doesn't get you anywhere. It just creates problems. And unfortunately, I hate to say this, but again, a lot of presenters have lost respect because of their style of broadcasting. That's true. You know? And so they might say, oh, yes, we are old school, mm. but I use the word old wine yeah, of course, much finer of than course, of course, new of wine. course, of course. Yeah. And when we get back, we want to find out, you know, what is the future like for the media worldwide, not just in Ghana? Radio and television, with the advent of um, social media, new media, are we going to relegate traditional media as we've always known it? We'll find out right here with Tommy and Amphorsen, only on KOD <laughs>
Smiles are one of the most important things we have. Globally, one in two children suffer from cavities. Pepsodent with maximum cavity protection repairs tiny holes before they become cavities. Because every smile matters. It's put smiles on many, 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 countless faces over the years, in the last, well, over 40, 42 years. 42 years, of course, I'm 42. 43 years has done it. <laughs> and um, we're here to celebrate him in a very spectacular way. What, what do you make of this place, Uncle Tommy? Here? Yes. Where we are? Where we are, Qualis. Um, it's, it's totally 100% it's, 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 Ghanaian it's, owned. It's, 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 I said to myself, you know, coming up the lift <laughs> right? and then where we are, you mm. know, I, I took some videos okay. of... of it's, it's fantastic right it's absolutely it's amazing mm, mm. you know it's it's so serene it's it's remarkable that's right i would right. love to come and spend the night yeah here. and if you think of spending the night it's probably with the family i that'd recommend lovely. qualities any that'd day right we should probably do that for you for your birthday I, well that would be a good that, idea that would be a good idea right <laughs> we'll make it happen we'll make it happen hey, man. um you've been in the media landscape for for many years some are saying that there's been a total takeover of um you know the media space where, where the advent of new media your know, instagrams people are spending a lot more time on their phones than than watching traditional television as we've always known um some sit sit in their cars and that, that those are the only times they get to yeah. to listen to the yeah. radio is radio and tv die are, are they dying are tv and radio I, dying? I, I don't think so I, I don't i mean this has been here for centuries i mean maconi uh maconi was the first person to start radio mm. Um, you, you, can't, you can't do without it. I mean, if, if radio were to shut down today, mm. what are you going to listen to? Um, you can't listen, to, you can only listen to your own music That's that right. you recorded. You can watch things on social media mm. as to whether it's the truth or not. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's the question. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. But again, uh, radio, you, I don't think it'll, it'll, it'll go away. You know, some of us might phase out um, totally. But then, no matter what, people also come and get into the... Mm. So I think traditional or mainstream radio will, mm. will, will, will stick around for many, many centuries. Wow. What do, you, what do you think ought to be changed? Not just in Ghana, but when you watch television worldwide, you, you, you listen to the radio in Ghana. I mean, now you can actually tell um, that uh, radio station A is aligned to a certain political party. Some of us did, have done this for many years and never wore political colors. But then, now you can actually tell. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be very difficult to change. You know, people have passions. It's just like football. But then I think it goes beyond just the people who listen. Ownership as well. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. And, and it's like, you see, it's like football. Mm -hmm. Some people just love Manchester United, yeah. whether they lose or win. Yeah. Liverpool, whether they lose or mm. win. That's how it is. Mm. But then, for me, my main concern is how neutral can you be as a person that's right okay governments will come and governments will go whether we like it or not mm. so for me my baseline here is being a neutral person yes if if you're doing an interview you give five minutes to this person give five yeah. minutes to that person. Just be fair be fair you know ask very relevant questions mm -hmm. uh, my main concern is the change that ought to be the underlying factor is training. That's right. And unfortunately, um, a lot of media owners are not prepared to invest in training mm. because they think it's a waste of money. That's right. But if you listen to, I'm sure if you went back on the air or KSM coming back on the air, and I listened to KSM and I listened to some of the young ones, the difference is so vast yeah. in terms of professionalism, mm. you know. And I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but some of them are actually a joke. To be on the air, they, they right. shouldn't be there, mm. okay? But then, like Ravi that's, said, that's you being candid as always. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, some of them it's a, it's a total joke, mm. you know. And so, um, there needs to be a little investment into training. Um, you find out that it goes a long way to help you. People who want to go into training are more interested in going abroad. Yeah, you know, BBC, mm. VOA, mm. CNN. Mm. That but, affiliation. Exactly, but it's basically the same thing we're all doing here. Right. So why can't we patronize what we have here? But again, the question is, people who have set up media schools are teaching them the wrong thing mm. because it's being done all in the name of money. That's right. Okay. So they churn out people who haven't perhaps not even learned anything. Mm -hmm. But then, hey, that's the way the world is going. So what do we do? I'm just one person. You're just one person. Even the two of us, 
or three of us or four of us cannot change it on our own. That's it's right. got to be a united mm. effort. Mm. But as to when that will come, I really can't tell. Mm. Do, do you think we have too many radio stations? Too many. Too many. Too many. Uh, as the saying goes, what? Uh, many are called, mm. but few, few, <laughs> few are chosen. chosen. <laughs> you know, uh, but I think there are just too many of them. Um, the bandwidth, I think, is totally choked. Yeah, you know? very and now, choked. Yeah. yeah. And now there's this problem where stations are uh, uh, crashing into stations mm. because of mm. the, the, yeah. the, I've, I've, the slim I've, I've margin I've of frequency. That. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, as to how that is going to be resolved, I don't know. But personally, I think there are way too many. You know. One of the things you've done is also educate countless people in the media landscape. And I mean, you can always tell the difference when you, you listen to these boys. Is, is the school still in existence? Mm. Uh, COVID uh, passed by. Oh, dear. Yeah, and uh, COVID said, well, you know, go, 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 go stay in the house for, you know. Because the lecture halls are such that you can, you can barely do social distancing. Yeah. And I'm very concerned about yeah. that, you know. So I'd rather protect people's lives mm. than think of the money we're going to make. Okay. Uh, and... and Someday we, we might come back, I don't know. Depends when uh, uncle COVID-19 wow. uh, go, goes away. But what, what, what do you want to put in place? You know, maybe you want to expand this, get it bigger. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we, we're investors. actually going to relocate. Yeah, relocate. Uh, relocate, okay. you know, get a much bigger place mm. so that uh, we, we concentrate on getting uh, fewer students, right. but then give them the quality that they, they, right. they, they, they desire to get. And right. then we, we'll take it from there. It's a very critical year for us. I mean, elections is just around the corner. In December, we're going to the polls as a country. Um, being someone who's been in the, the, the media, someone that we all have so much reverence for, what, what do you want to hear on the radio? What do you want to see on television? What do you want to see um, amongst the, the politicians as they go out to campaign? I want to see decent language. Hmm. I want to see... Uh, debatable things on a very mature level, you know. Unfortunately, uh, yes, it's an election year, so every radio station, TV station talking about politics. Right. But unfortunately, uh, it's a bit difficult sometimes to watch when they tend to scream at each other. Yeah. When they can discuss things on a very subtle level. The thing of it is to not to say, oh, this person has done this, this person has done that, but what we are going to do, how we're going to solve, because we have numerous problems. We do. Numerous problems. People, people are going through hard times, especially because of the COVID. That's right. And so this is where the politicians all need to come out and, and, and sort of like help us build our hopes mm. and dreams and aspirations. That's right. And, and when that is done, you know, rather than pinpoint, this person didn't do this, this person didn't do that. I mean, it's past and gone. Yeah, Let's we should focus look on the way forward. Exactly. Right. And, and I think that's, that's, that would be right. very healthy mm. for us. Tommy and Paulson, thank you very much for making time for us thank here you for on KOD Meet. And it's always a pleasure to, to see you. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. Right? Thank you. We'll catch you next week right here on KOD Meet.